Do you hear the words fougere and chipra and think, what the F are those? Well, so did I at one point. <laughs> So I'm going to try and explain all these different classifications of fragrances as best as J. Royal can. If you're watching this video, I suppose that means that you stumbled upon it because you like fragrances. You like perfumery, maybe you have one or two colognes or a fully fledged fragrance collection. There are quite a few fragrance reviewers on YouTube and even more on the general web. And they use words like fougere, chipre, oriental, aromatic to describe fragrances. At first I just thought these were ways to describe fragrances, but then when I dug a little deeper I realized there are eight main olfactive families that really account for most fragrances out there. You have three that are in the fresh side of things that are more suitable for warm weather, and then you have another three that is in the warm category more suitable for cooler weather. And the last two are right in the middle. They're the two transitionary families that are in between fresh and warm. Now, some of these categories are pretty self-explanatory, others not so much. So let's get into it. Within the fresh olfactive families, you have citrus, floral, and aromatic. And on the warmer side of things, you have fougere, oriental, and leather. And then our last two are the transition ones, which are chipra and woody. So let's start with the warmer categories. If you're a man, you've probably come across some fougeres in your day. Fougère is the French word for fern, and it was popularized by Hubigant Perfumes when they released Fougère Royale back in 1800 something. And ever since then, fougères have been a staple in men's perfumery. In fact, a majority of fougères tend to lean masculine rather than feminine. Fougère is one of those fragrance categories that has specific notes associated to it, so it definitely has a citrus opening with a bergamot, and as it develops, it has some vetiver and oak moss, so there is some greenness to it, and there is a bit of lavender as well, so you will have noticed a lot of these types of fragrances on the shelves at any fragrance store. A lot of the poor Ohm fragrances happen to be fougeres, Azaro Pour Ohm, Paco Urban Pour Ohm, Dolce & Gabbana Pour Ohm. Now, although fougeres tend to be citrus in nature with some green qualities as well, because they're more masculine, they are a little bit animalic typically and if you don't know what animalic means it means it smells a bit like an animal it's a bit earthy a little bit dirty in some cases and this can of course vary from fragrance to fragrance because a lot of the old school masculine fougeres were really really strong and dirty and definitely definitely manly but now some of the more modern ones are a bit light and perhaps don't have that genuine oak moss that used to exist back in the day and now they're a little more citrus dominant, which that tends to be the case for a lot of modern fragrances. But what isn't citrus dominant is our next family, which is the oriental family. Oriental fragrances tend to be very sensual and a little bit sweet, spicy, and smoky. Incense comes to mind when I think of oriental fragrances. There is also a very large theme of a culinary quality with cinnamon, coffee, a bit of chocolate, and definitely vanilla. A lot of warm vanilla is incorporated into a lot of oriental fragrances. There also tends to be a dryness to oriental fragrances with some resins as well. There really tends to be a lot of gourmand-like qualities with oriental perfumery. And if you don't know gourmand means, it just means yummy. It means things that are associated with something edible. And although this isn't always the case, there's a lot of that, which means this family can really go either way. It is pretty unisex, I find, especially nowadays with the emergence of androgynous perfumery where men wear women's fragrances and vice versa. Everyone loves sweet, spicy fragrances. And that's why the Oriental category I find works the best in the cooler weather, in evenings, on dates things of that nature. They generally have a very comforting quality to them, really cozy fragrances. Some of my favorite orientals off the top of my head, Kalamat Black by Arabian Oud, Incense Oud by Killian, and Intimately Yours by David Beckham. Eat your heart out, posh spice. I tried to throw in like a troll fragrance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the temperature in my cabin is starting to rise, so I gotta wrap up this third warm fragrance because I'm feeling pretty warm right now and it's leather. Now, leather is the most self-explanatory of the three warm fragrance families. 
and it really is fragrances that incorporate the note of leather. There isn't necessarily a leather essential oil that they just add into a fragrance to make it smell like leather. It's a fragrance category that really has a lot of creativity put into it. And just like a lot of fragrances, it is the artist's interpretation of what they think leather should smell like. There is a surprising amount of variance when it comes to leather fragrances from the most light and delicate of suede type of chords to the heavy, smoky, disgusting cowhide accords. For example, the ones in Complex by Boadicea the Victorious. Really well-crafted fragrance, but it smells like all kinds of secretions and excrements and animalic fluids that I don't necessarily want to put on my skin, but maybe you want to put on yours and I don't judge you all the time. Leather fragrances are pretty fascinating because they have existed for quite a while. For hundreds of years, the early fragrances used actual stuff from animals, and I mean all kinds of stuff, to simulate certain smells. Nowadays, you can find more contemporary versions of leather with CH Men Privé or even Dior Homme Parfum, where it has a more modern edge to it. But like I said before, there are still some old school leather fragrances that are really kicking me in the butt these days with Leather Oud by Dior and the aforementioned Complex. It is another one of those things where really keep it to the cooler weather. It's a warmer fragrance, so wear it in the cold. Hopefully that's clear. <laughs> All that goes into these videos, eh? Like, it's so unnatural. <laughs> now, talking about all these heavy, warm fragrances meant for the cold weather, it's really making me crave some fresh air. So I'm gonna head out to the outer decks and talk about some of the fresh fragrance families when it comes to olfactive myths. <laughs> now that I'm outside, I feel motivated to talk about citrus. Whenever you think of a citrus fragrance, you I mean, I really think of right, vibrant, zesty, grapefruit, mandarin, lemon. Bergamot is a citrus that's in almost every fragrance, but not everyone has lemon and orange and all the other beautiful citruses that are out there. Blood orange as well. Now, citrus is an olfactive family that is pretty self-explanatory. It is a fragrance that is dominated by citrus notes. And although you may think that citrus fragrances are more masculine because of all the citrus freshies out there, there's actually more female fragrances that are dominated by citrus. And they're often paired with citrus florals as well, most notably orange blossom and neroli to a certain degree as well. Now, some notable citrus-based fragrances Orange Sanguine by Atelier Cologne, the current formulation of Dior Homme Cologne as well, Bergamot by Commodity, and Hashtag Sporty by Besties. And although citrus is the symbolic king of the olfactive fresh families, the most popular one by far is floral. The floral olfactive family dominates the fragrance market, especially in the female side of things. Bath & Body Works has like 50 floral fragrances on their own. That's one storefront. Now floral fragrances may seem a bit monotonous, but there is a crazy wide variety of flowers out there. So there are tons of different compositions when it comes to the floral genre, because you can have anywhere from a fresh bouquet of flowers or roses to more grounded, earthy, green type of florals that even lean towards the aromatic side of things. Some notable floral fragrances that I enjoy, Reflection Woman, Spring Fling by Bond Number no. 9, and Burberry London for her. Hi guys, just so you know, I would really appreciate a like because likes are very likable in the YouTube algorithm thingy. And also subscribe if you haven't, if you want to see my face some more. If not, I won't take it personally, I promise. What are you guys doing down here? You're making me crouch and shit? Now in the floral component of this video, I did mention the word aromatic. Now when I think of aromatic, I think of aromatic foods and spices. But when it comes to fragrances and the olfactive families, aromatic is not that at all. <laughs> aromatic fragrances tend to be fresh and herbaceous. They have a lot of herbal qualities, so thyme and rosemary are often incorporated. Lavender also plays a nice role too, so I think aromatic fragrances tend to lean more masculine than not, and they're often also coupled with citrus notes and sometimes some spiciness as well. So there is a nice little variety within aromatic fragrances. 
Sunshine Man by Amouage is quite aromatic. Silver Mountain Water by Creed. And also Eight and Bob is a fragrance that is pretty aromatic. You can really, really feel it when you smell it. But most notably, Whatever It Takes by George Clooney. You know what guys, as beautiful as it is out here, I think I need to get inside because it's quite windy, quite chilly, and my cabin is calling me. And back in the cabin. Here to talk about the last two fragrance families for this video. The two transition olfactive families are literally just that, in between fresh and warm. And it all depends on the individual fragrance's makeup. Some lean fresh, some lean warm. The first one being woody. Now the woody fragrance family may seem pretty straightforward, Okay, it's got woods in it, but there is some variability, kind of like leather fragrances, where you have some richer, hardier, smoother woods like sandalwood and some of the drier woods in a cedar wood, for example. And within that same theme, you have your smooth, rich, hardy patchouli and your dusty, earthy, dry vetiver. So there is quite a bit of variance when it comes to woody fragrances. They tend to be pretty hardy compositions. They're not necessarily that light, but because of that possible green quality and even a little bit of a citrus kick off the top, it also allows them to be worn in warmer weather. Some notable woody fragrances, Tam Dao by Diptyque, especially the Eau de Parfum concentration, Wonderwood by Comme des Garçons, Bulgari Man Wood Essence, one of the newer ones, and for my old school friends, Lidge. And last but not least, we have the one fragrance family that really caused me to make this video. Shepra. Mr. Boudry, my friend from Canada, he was wondering what the heck Shepra means. What is it? What is a Shepra? When people say, oh yeah, it's a Shepra, I have no idea. Well, guess what? It was a bit confusing for me as well. I'm Canadian, which means I'm a little bit familiar with French. Shepra translates to Cyprus. So immediately I thought, okay, great. It's fragrances that probably contain the note of cypress, which is a bit green, a bit of a coniferous note, a little bit of woody greenness. But I later found out that Shepra translates to the country of cypress, not cypress tree. It's named after a country, so what does it really smell like? But luckily, Shepras are fairly specific in their note composition. Slightly similar to Fougeres, there is a green quality with bergamot, and a bit of patchouli and some oak moss. But I find one of its distinguishing characteristics is labdanum. So it does give it a slightly more feminine quality than fougeres. Shepras tend to be a bit sharper, even powdery, so there is some dryness to it. But they are also a bit woody and even mossy, a moss-like lichen type of accord. So unlike fougeres, shepras tend to be kind of unisex. There's some for the men and some for the women and everything else in between. So while you have King Kouros as a fougere, on the cheaper side you have Pour Monsieur by Chanel. A little more sophisticated, a little more French. And for women, we have the older release Dior Essence. And for a more contemporary Chypre, Tom Ford's Noir Anthracite falls within that category. So very different than the other ones, but still has that delicate edge to it even though it's really strong. <laughs> now within all these categories, there are a ton of subcategories. Whether we're talking about oriental gourmands, fruity florals, there's absolutely an infinite number of ways to describe fragrances. I'm not gonna get into those in this video only because I can go on and on and on in regards to these fragrances. And I don't do that on J Royal. If you watch the channel, guys, if you've been subscribed, you know I like to do a bit of a royal rush through things sometimes. But as a challenge to my viewers, if you can name your favorite fragrance from each of these eight main categories in the comments below, I will pin my favorite answer and feature it in a future video. And if you do wanna watch more videos, there are some on the screen for you. Please feel free to watch them. Consider subscribing and like the video if you liked it because I liked it. I hope you do too. These are the royal rules, guys. They're not set in stone. You know, it's my own way of expressing myself. So I guess that's kind of my opinion. You know, let's get your own.